as it, since it's a radio telescope, it observes radio waves. And pulsars gives off radio, rapidly rotating neutron stars gives off radio waves. Um, it can also detect things happening in our ionosphere, right? This is a part in the upper atmosphere that's electrically charged. For generations, humanity has gazed at the stars, trying to find the answers to the age-old question of weather. Life exists beyond Earth's boundaries. Because of these questions, scientists and astronomers have studied the skies for centuries, and eventually space, too. In all of that exploration, though, we've still been the only life that exists, or so we thought. The Voyager just warned scientists that radio messages were received from deep space, and these messages have changed everything we ever thought about space and who's actually out there. Join us as we dig deeper into what was found and how it might just change the world as we know it. NASA has stumbled upon a treasure trove of mysterious radio messages, all coming from a single, distant cosmic source. This discovery is massive. Fast radio bursts are a really exciting mystery. Uh, we basically don't, we have more ideas of what they could be then we have actual detected fast radio bursts. Because nothing like this was ever seen before. The radio signals were fast radio burst signals that were first detected by the Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment, also known as CHIME. CHIME is a radio telescope located at the Dominion Radio Astrophysical Observatory in British Columbia, Canada. It consists of four large cylindrical radio antennas, each measuring 20 meters by 100 meters which already shows just how powerful this piece of technology is. What makes it even better, though, is the way it's been set up. These antennas are arranged in a fixed cylinder configuration, meaning they don't move or point at specific targets like traditional telescopes. Instead, CHIME captures signals from a large portion of the sky all at once, making it an ideal instrument for studying fast radio bursts and other transient events. What's surprising here is that CHIME is actually primarily designed for mapping the distribution of neutral hydrogen in the universe, which is a crucial component of its cosmic evolution. But its wide field of view and real-time signal processing capabilities also make it well-suited for detecting and studying fast radio bursts, which last for just milliseconds and appear randomly across the sky. This isn't something most telescopes can do, which is one of the things that makes this particular one so special. CHIME works with the Survey for Transient Astronomical Radio Emission 2. STAIR-2 is a radio telescope that uses a network of small and relatively simple radio antennas designed for transient radio event detection. The antennas are deployed in a phased array configuration, allowing them to work together to observe a relatively wide area of the sky simultaneously. The unique aspect of STAIR-2 is its low-cost design, using inexpensive and easily accessible materials including cake pans. Despite its simplicity, STAIR-2 has proven to be capable of detecting fast radio bursts and other radio signals, especially when it's paired with something as powerful as CHIME. What's incredible here is that CHIME wasn't even actively observing in the direction of the burst, yet it caught the signal loud and clear in its peripheral vision. But according to Kiyoshi Masui, an assistant professor of physics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, STAIR-2 also saw it, and it's only a set of a few radio antennae literally made out of cake pans. So putting things in perspective, these radio bursts weren't just random, and they weren't trying to hide by any means. These radio bursts meant business. They wanted to be heard. And well, that goal was achieved immediately. FRBs had long been a subject of fascination and intrigue among astronomers because of the fact that they're temporary. They are extremely brief bursts of radio waves that last only a fraction of a second. They are highly energetic, releasing as much power in a few milliseconds as the sun does in years. Despite their intense energy output, they are temporary events, appearing and disappearing quickly. Once an FRB is detected, it is challenging to predict when or where the next one will occur. This makes them difficult to study in real time. The majority of these radio bursts had been observed to originate from sources billions of light years away from Earth, so it's particularly challenging to study in detail. The exact origin of fast radio bursts remains one of the greatest mysteries in astronomy. One of the crucial aspects in understanding FRBs is the dispersion effect. As radio waves traverse the vast expanse of space, they encounter various obstacles, including plasma, a soup of charged particles that fills the space between stars and galaxies. 
This plasma can influence radio waves, causing delays in their arrival on Earth. The dispersion effect occurs when higher frequencies arrive first, while lower frequencies arrive later because of these delays caused by plasma. This phenomenon provides valuable information for determining the distance of the FRB source from Earth. The journey of exploring FRBs began in 2007, began in two when the first FRB was discovered near the Little Magellanic Cloud by the Parkes Radio Telescope in the Parkes Observatory, located in New South Wales, Australia, at the time, the discovery of FRBs was considered quite weird, since they were observed in only three out of the 13 beams of the Parkes multi-beam receiver. But it didn't just end there. A few years later, the research landscape transformed when a student named Sarah Burke Spolior made another significant discovery. She identified an FRB with a dispersion measure similar to the initial burst rekindling interest and encouraging scientists to really focus on the study of FRBs in 2013. Thornton and colleagues officially gave these mysterious bursts a name, fast radio bursts, further solidifying their significance in astrophysics research. Subsequent observations with the Parkes 64-meter radio telescope led to the identification of four additional FRBs. These bursts exhibited much larger dispersion measures than the first discovery. But what makes FRBs even more interesting is the energy they release. Even though they originate from galaxies millions or even billions of light years away, FRBs can unleash energy equivalent to powering hundreds of millions of suns in just a matter of seconds. This immense power has left scientists trying to figure out the source that's responsible for generating these extraordinary bursts. Identifying the cosmic objects or phenomena responsible for producing these intense radio bursts has been quite an important task for scientists. The majority of detected FRBs have been observed coming from far beyond our Milky Way galaxy. These bursts travel across vast cosmic distances, with some originating billions of light years away from Earth. This tremendous distance has made it challenging for astronomers to determine the specific sources of these bursts. One of the most interesting aspects of FRBs is that some have been observed to repeat, emitting multiple bursts over time from the same location. Repeating FRBs offer scientists an opportunity to study their properties in more detail and potentially gain insights into their origins. On the other hand, non-repeating FRBs, which only appear once and then never again, remain a lot more difficult to study, but the scientists working on the research of these radio bursts have narrowed things down significantly. For starters, we've got magnetars. These are a fascinating and extreme type of neutron star, which are incredibly dense remnants of massive stars that have undergone a supernova explosion. What sets magnetars apart is their remarkably powerful magnetic fields, the strongest known in the universe. These magnetic fields can be trillions of times more intense than those of typical neutron stars. The origin of magnetars' incredibly strong magnetic fields is still a subject of ongoing research. One leading theory suggests that during the violent supernova explosion that marks the birth of a neutron star, small variations in the density and composition of the core can lead to the amplification of the magnetic field through a process known as magnetic flux freezing. As the core of the collapsing star shrinks and rotates faster, the magnetic field lines get compressed leading to a drastic increase in magnetic strength. The energy stored within the intense magnetic fields of magnetars is truly astonishing. A small region on the surface of a magnetar can contain more energy than our entire sun emits in thousands of years. This energy release can take the form of powerful bursts of X-rays and gamma rays, which are known as giant flares. Now, some scientists have proposed that these giant flares from magnetars could also be a potential source of fast radio bursts, during a giant flare event, there is a sudden and rapid rearrangement of the magnetar's magnetic field. This process releases an enormous amount of energy, causing a burst of high-energy radiation. One hypothesis is that during this magnetic rearrangement, the intense burst of energy can create a coherent beam of radio waves that shoots out into space. If this beam happens to point toward Earth, we would observe it as an FRB. The emission of these intense radio waves would probably be so brief and intense that it corresponds to the transient nature of FRBs. But straying a little away from this particular theory, we've got neutron stars, which are the incredibly dense remnants of massive stars that have undergone supernova explosions. When a massive star exhausts its nuclear fuel, it undergoes a catastrophic collapse, leading to a supernova. 
If the core of the star is massive enough, it may not entirely collapse into a black hole, but instead become a neutron star. Neutron stars are incredibly compact, with a mass greater than that of the Sun, but squeezed into a sphere only about 10 to 20 kilometers in diameter. Now for the first time, we have an accurate estimate of the mass of the neutron star and the diameter. Because of their high density, a teaspoon of neutron star material would weigh billions of tons on Earth. When two neutron stars are in a binary system and orbit each other closely, their mutual gravitational attraction can cause them to spiral toward each other over time. This gradual and spiral is driven by the emission of gravitational waves, which are ripples in space-time predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity. As the two neutron stars come closer and closer, their orbits become faster, and the gravitational waves become more intense. Eventually, they reach a point where they can no longer support their orbital motion against gravitational wave emission. At this stage, a rapid and catastrophic collision happens. This is an incredibly energetic event, releasing an immense amount of energy in various forms. One of the key consequences of this collision is the emission of powerful bursts of electromagnetic radiation, including radio waves. This burst of radio waves is what astronomers observe as a fast radio burst. We can finally begin to piece together how neutron stars really work. The collision of neutron stars is a cataclysmic cosmic event that produces a brief and intense flash of radio waves, characteristic of an FRB. The burst of radio waves are like zaps and can originate from a point in the sky that is billions of light years away. Although this hypothesis is very closely related to another one, there's a chance for a neutron star and a black hole to be in close proximity and form a binary system. As the neutron star orbits the black hole, the immense gravitational forces at play can lead to a fascinating and energetic phenomenon known as tidal disruption. The immense gravitational pull of the black hole on the neutron star's extended side and weaker pull on its far side causes a significant tidal force. This tidal force stretches and distorts the neutron star, causing it to become elongated along the direction of the black hole. This process is similar to how the moon's gravitational pull causes tides on Earth's oceans, but on a much more extreme scale. As the neutron star comes closer to the black hole during its orbital motion, the tidal forces become increasingly intense. There reaches a point where these tidal forces exceed the structural integrity of the neutron star, leading to a chaotic level of tidal disruption. During the tidal disruption, the gravitational forces of the black hole strip material from the neutron star, creating a stream of gas and debris. This material then spirals inwards toward the black hole in a process known as accretion, as it accretes onto the black hole, the material becomes heated and accelerated, emitting intense bursts of radiation across the electromagnetic spectrum. One consequence of the accretion process is the emission of powerful bursts of radiation, which can include fast radio bursts. The highly energetic and transient nature of these bursts makes them characteristic of FRBs. Observing such an event from a distance, astronomers would detect the intense radio waves emitted during the accretion process as a fast radio burst. The burst would be relatively quick and would carry information about the extreme gravitational dynamics in the accretion process near the black hole. At the same time, though, young supernovas might also be responsible for these mysterious radio messages. As we've been over before, supernova remnants are the aftermath of massive stars that have undergone a supernova explosion. During a supernova, the outer layers of the star are expelled into space in a powerful explosion, leaving behind a highly energetic and expanding shell of gas and debris. Supernova remnants are known to be potent sources of various types of radiation. As the expanding shell of gas interacts with the surrounding interstellar medium, shockwaves are generated, accelerating particles to high energies. These high-energy particles emit radiation across the electromagnetic spectrum including X-rays and gamma rays. But you see, some researchers have proposed that young supernova remnants could also produce fast radio bursts. The key to this hypothesis lies in the interaction between the expanding shell of the supernova remnant and surrounding magnetic fields or interstellar material. As the supernova remnant expands, it can encounter regions of the interstellar medium with different magnetic field strengths. These encounters can lead to the amplification of magnetic fields through a process known as magnetic field compression or shock compression. The compression of magnetic fields can store vast amounts of energy within the supernova remnant. At some point, 
When the magnetic fields within the supernova remnant reach a critical point, they can undergo a rapid reconfiguration, releasing their stored energy. This sudden release of magnetic energy can give rise to intense and short-term bursts of radiation, including fast radio bursts. If young supernova remnants are actually responsible for some FRBs, the bursts emitted during such events would share certain characteristics. They would be relatively short-lived and exhibit a burst of radio waves with high energies. Although, if you really think about it, fast radio bursts might also originate from highly magnetized pulsars and their flares. Pulsars are fascinating astronomical objects and a specific type of neutron star. They are also parts of massive stars that have undergone a supernova explosion. During this explosion, the core of the star collapses, leaving behind a dense compact object composed almost entirely of neutrons. What makes pulsars unique is their rapid rotation, spinning around their axis many times per second. This rapid rotation is a result of the conservation of angular momentum during the supernova explosion. On top of that, pulsars have incredibly strong magnetic fields, much more powerful than those of typical neutron stars. Pulsars emit beams of radiation from their magnetic poles. As the pulsar rotates, these beams sweep across space, somewhat like a cosmic lighthouse. If one of these beams happens to be directed toward Earth, we observe periodic bursts of radiation, much like a lighthouse beam appearing to flash on and off as it rotates. So even if the radiation isn't actually in the burst form, it'll appear that way. Both the bursts of radio waves from magnetic flares and FRBs are transient, meaning they occur for only a very short duration. The bursts from both scenarios are also characterized by their intense energy release. In the case of highly magnetized pulsars undergoing a magnetic flare, the reconfiguration of the magnetic fields leads to an immense release of energy, so both are fairly similar. But the thing is, while most of the detected FRBs have been observed from sources outside our Milky Way galaxy, the distances to these sources are incredibly vast, spanning millions or even billions of light years away. This makes pinpointing their exact origins challenging. Astronomers have proposed several hypotheses here, but no single explanation accounts for all observed FRB events. The most popular hypothesis here is that they're coming from an active galactic nuclei. These are incredibly bright and energetic regions found at the centers of some galaxies. They are powered by supermassive black holes that are millions to billions of times more massive than our Sun. As matter accretes onto these black holes, immense gravitational forces and magnetic fields are generated near the black hole's event horizon. The intense gravitational and magnetic forces in an active galactic nuclei can lead to the acceleration of charged particles to extreme energies. These particles may emit synchrotron radiation as they spiral along magnetic field lines, producing intense bursts of radiation, potentially including fast radio bursts. Plus, they're known for their variability in emission across different wavelengths. This variability makes them compelling candidates for FRBs, as sudden changes in the accretion flow or magnetic field configuration could result in transient bursts of radio waves. Star-forming regions are dense and gas-rich environments where massive stars are born from collapsing molecular clouds. These regions are characterized by intense radiation, stellar winds, and powerful outflows. The birth of massive stars and the associated energetic processes, such as stellar explosions, massive outflows, and interactions between protostars, can release tremendous amounts of energy. These energetic events may lead to intense bursts of radiation, including fast radio bursts. But if there's one possibility that's on everyone's minds, it's that maybe someone's out there who's sending us secret messages that we need to decode. One characteristic of certain FRBs is their non-repeating nature. Unlike many other astronomical phenomena, these bursts do not occur in a regular or periodic manner. Each burst seems to be a unique event, appearing only once and not repeating at a later time. In addition to being non-repeating, some FRBs exhibit random patterns in their emission. This means that the bursts do not follow a predictable sequence or show any identifiable pattern in their occurrence or behavior. You see, the non-repeating and random nature of FRBs is what one might expect from intentional communication signals. If an advanced extraterrestrial civilization were sending deliberate messages across the cosmos, they might intentionally avoid repeating the same signal or following a predictable pattern to avoid confusion and make their presence known. 
One reason scientists consider the possibility of intelligent origins is that the non-repeating and random emission patterns are challenging to explain through natural astrophysical processes alone. Many known astronomical phenomena, such as pulsars and magnetars that we've talked about earlier in the video, exhibit regular and periodic behaviors, making them distinguishable from FERBs in this regard. The non-repeating and random patterns in FRB emission could be consistent with a focused transmission aimed directly at Earth or another target, which is totally opposite to natural astrophysical phenomena that may emit radiation uniformly in all directions, a targeted transmission would appear as a single event from a specific source. One of the reasons why scientists consider the possibility of intelligent origins is that the non-repeating and random emission patterns are challenging to explain through natural astrophysical processes alone. From the information we've already glossed over a bit, You'd be aware that various other astronomical phenomena like binary star systems, supernova remnants, and active galactic nuclei often exhibit regular and periodic variations in their emissions. These patterns result from inherent orbital or rotational motions, and they can be reliably predicted or modeled. The mechanisms behind regular and periodic emissions in known astrophysical sources are well understood and tied to specific physical processes. The random and non-repeating nature of FRBs stands in contrast to the predictability and periodicity observed in regular astrophysical sources. The unpredictability of FRBs makes it difficult to attribute their emission to a stable or natural source. It has to be something that is more than just a process, more than existence alone. Now, detecting non-repeating and random FRBs presents significant observational challenges too. Since FRBs can occur unpredictably, Catching them in real time requires sophisticated and wide-field radio telescopes capable of scanning large portions of the sky rapidly. Confirmation of non-repeating FRBs demands careful scrutiny to ensure they are not mistaken for noise or instrumental artifacts. But there are protocols in place to make sure that doesn't happen too. SETI programs are specifically designed to scan the cosmos for artificial or engineered signals that could indicate the presence of advanced extraterrestrial civilizations. These programs focus on distinguishing between naturally occurring astrophysical phenomena and potential signals generated by intelligent beings. They can basically scan very large regions of the sky, listening for signals across different radio frequencies. Their wide field coverage allows them to observe a diverse range of celestial objects and phenomena, increasing the chances of detecting potential signals from extraterrestrial sources, including FRBs. The mysterious nature of FRBs and the lack of definitive evidence for their origins make them a subject of interest for the researchers. While most FRBs are currently attributed to natural astrophysical processes, their sporadic nature leaves room for further exploration, including the possibility of an intelligent source. When SETI programs collaborate with other astronomical observatories and research groups to share data and insights, the collaboration creates a space where there can be a more comprehensive study of phenomena like FRBs, incorporating different perspectives and expertise. So studying these mysterious signals becomes a lot easier. But even then, there is now more need than ever to study these radio bursts. And NASA's got a plan, and they're going to use everything they can do to get this one done. Wide-field radio telescopes play a crucial role in detecting fast radio bursts because of their unique design and capabilities. They have a large field of view, which means they can simultaneously observe a broad area of the sky. This high data collection rate is crucial for identifying FRBs, which emit intense bursts of radio waves lasting only a fraction of a second. This is in contrast to traditional radio telescopes with narrow fields of view that can only observe a small patch of the sky at a time. The wide field of view allows wide field telescopes to monitor large portions of the sky simultaneously without having to split focus. With their wide field of view, these telescopes can perform rapid surveys of the sky covering vast regions in a relatively short period. This capability is crucial for capturing transient events like FRBs. The ability to survey large portions of the sky quickly increases the chances of detecting these rare and elusive bursts, even if they're not significant enough for cake pans to notice. Wide field telescopes are equipped with sophisticated real-time data processing systems that can analyze incoming radio signals as they are received. 
This allows for immediate detection and identification of potential FRBs during the observation process. Many wide-field radio telescopes also have multi-beam receivers, allowing them to observe multiple regions of the sky simultaneously, which means that for them, it's much easier to detect and pinpoint the locations of FRBs this way. Plus, they're able to cover a wide range of radio frequencies, enabling the study of FRBs across different frequency bands. This helps in understanding the characteristics of FRBs and their potential origin, but there's only so much we can do from Earth. The Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 spacecraft were launched by NASA in 1977 with the primary mission of exploring the outer planets of our solar system. These intrepid travelers have since made their way beyond the edges of our solar system and entered interstellar space, providing invaluable data about the space environment. While FRB research is not their main focus, the Voyagers can play a role in uncovering more about them. One area where the Voyagers can contribute is in studying the interstellar medium itself. As they venture further into interstellar space, they encounter the medium that fills the vast gaps between stars and galaxies. Understanding the properties of this medium can offer insights into how FRBs make their way through space and any potential interactions they might face during their journey. Not just that, but the magnetic fields encountered by the Voyagers in interstellar space can provide clues about how FRBs might be affected by magnetic fields in the cosmos. The interaction between FRBs and magnetic fields is definitely an area of interest, as it could influence the observed properties of these bursts and help researchers decipher their origins. Plus, the Voyagers' observations of cosmic rays and high-energy particles in interstellar space can shed light on the potential impact of these energetic particles on FRB events. The radiation environment in the interstellar medium might influence the characteristics of FRBs, and studying this aspect can aid in refining our models and understanding the mechanisms that produce these intense bursts of radio waves in the first place. Now you might be wondering why there's so much research going into this anyway. On one hand, you have the possibility of aliens having something to do with it, that's something that we as humans need to get ahead of. If aliens are trying to make contact with us, we need to be paying attention, because if they do in fact make physical contact with the Earth, they may be sending us signals as messages to help us prepare for it. If we miss out on any of their signals and end up making the wrong move, things might translate as us initiating an attack, which is the opposite of what we'd want to do. But even if we take that whole thing out of the discussion, we've got the question of power here. FRBs represent an incredibly potent and virtually unlimited energy source. Their intense bursts of radio waves could provide an abundant and continuous supply of power that is not reliant on earthbound resources at all. Plus, unlike conventional energy sources that produce harmful emissions and contribute to climate change, harnessing FRBs would be a clean and green solution. It would have minimal impact on the environment and contribute to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. This could in turn be great for our planet since the greenhouse emissions that are already in the air have led to the severe climate change we are currently dealing with. If our energy is 100% clean, we'd no longer have to worry about causing damage to our planet while making technological advancements. It wouldn't even be a thought. But successfully harnessing FRBs would require advanced space-based technology and infrastructure. Although, if you think about it, with NASA and SpaceX already collaborating, you already have the basis for major advancements in the world of space exploration. This pursuit could drive the need for new technology even more, leading to more sophisticated telescopes and communication systems capable of capturing and utilizing these cosmic signals. That might seem a little too dramatic, but energy is one of the world's biggest problems right now. And if this is a legitimate way to solve the problem, NASA would focus a lot of its resources on figuring it out. The challenge of capturing and converting FRBs into usable power would drive technological innovation on an unprecedented scale for both government-led space exploration with NASA and private space exploring companies like SpaceX. It could spark revolutionary developments in wireless power transfer, signal processing, and space-based energy systems. This one thing has the power to effectively change the whole world. Plus, since FRBs are cosmic phenomena that can be detected from different regions of the universe, harnessing them for power could provide access to energy on a global scale. Remote and hard-to-reach areas could benefit from this cosmic power, helping bridge energy disparities worldwide. 
that, in turn, has the potential to change the entire world. Another major aspect here is that with FRBs being potentially billions of years old by the time they reach Earth, they offer a unique opportunity for long-term and sustainable energy solutions. This ancient cosmic energy could provide a stable power source for generations to come. That has been a pretty major problem we've been dealing with for the past few decades. With fossil fuels depleting as fast as they are, we're not only putting our current generation at risk, but also the generations that will come after us. They'll have to deal with the consequences of our actions. But if we somehow crack the power code for good, we won't just be able to mitigate the effects of climate change, but we'll also be creating a world where they never have to worry about power or resources, which was always the ultimate goal. But you see, we can't just get all the answers that easily. There are a lot of roadblocks that stand in the way of us making it to all of that power. FRBs originate from sources that are often millions or even billions of light years away from Earth. So we either need something that can capture the burst super quickly and as efficiently as possible, or something that is able to make it to the source itself, which might be extremely difficult because of the distance. The radio waves used for FRBs are subject to interference from various factors, including atmospheric conditions, natural cosmic phenomena, and man-made radio signals. This interference would lead to signal loss and make the power transfer from FRBs to Earth even more challenging. Even if we could capture FRBs efficiently, converting the radio wave energy into usable electrical power on Earth would likely face substantial losses. Current technologies face considerable efficiency issues over long distances, and this problem would be amplified when dealing with astronomical distances. But researchers still have hope that we can actually make it happen, do you? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and like always, we'll see you at the next one.